नमस्कार एंड वेलकम बैक टू एविएशन एवी गो वे यू फील द मोस्ट अलाइव यू आर विथ एविएशन एवी द ओनली चैनल ऑन यूट्यूब दैट टॉक्स अबाउट डाइवर्स सब्जेक्ट्स इन एविएशन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम ऑपरेशन मैनेजमेंट रेगुलेशन एनवायरमेंटल प्रोटेक्शन एंड मच मोर एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ प्रॉब्लम वेर देर इज एन ऑब्स्टिकल ऑन द अप्रोच सर्फेस बिकॉज ऑफ विच वी नीड टू डिसप्लेस द थ्रेश होल्ड विल कैरी आउट थोरो कैलकुलेशन टू क्लैरिफाई द कॉन्सेप्ट so without any delay let's get started the first question is why do we have to displace the threshold the threshold may be displaced from the extremity of the runway in the following cases when there is an obstacle infringing the obstacle limitation surface so what is obstacle limitation surface to understand this question do refer to our video the link of which will be given in the description Here in this video, we describe all the nine surfaces in detail. So the second case where you may have to displace the threshold is when the pan ops airspace is being infringed by an obstacle. The beginning of the portion of the runway is not usable for landing of an aircraft. This may be because the strength of the pavement before the threshold is not able to withstand the weight of the aircraft during a touchdown. the next reason may be when there are local noise abatement procedures in place so these are the possible reasons where you may have to displace the threshold of the runway from the extremity in this video we will consider the case when there is an obstacle infringing the approach surface and is present at a particular distance from the threshold and because of which in order to continue operations on the runway we have to displace the threshold so before we get into the calculations we we must understand what is the approach surface and its dimensions firstly let us look at the plan view of this surface this surface starts at a distance of 60 meters from the runway threshold the width of the inner edge is 280 meters which is that of the runway strip next it has a divergence of 15% and the final width of this surface is 4780 meters as you can see here Now let us look at the profile view of this surface. So the surface starts at a distance of 60 meters from the runway threshold. The first part of this surface extends from 60 meters from the runway threshold to a distance of 3000 meters from the runway threshold and it has a slope of 2%. The permissible top elevation of an object at this distance is 60 meters. You can get this value by applying a slope of 2% to a distance of 3000 meters the second part of the approach surface extends from a distance of 3000 meters from the beginning of the surface to a distance of 3600 meters and this part of the surface has a slope of 2.5% so at the end of 6600 meters from the beginning of the approach surface the permissible elevation is 150 meters this again can be derived after you cal carry out the similar calculation and the third part of this surface extends from a distance of 6600 meters to a distance of 8400 meters and this surface has no slope now there may be a case when an aircraft is disabled at a particular distance from the threshold and this tail of the aircraft is infringing the approach surface so in these cases you may have to displace the threshold from the extremity to continue operations on this runway this is a boeing 747 type aircraft but for the ease of calculation we'll consider the airbus 380 the airbus 380 has a tail height of 24.1 meters but we'll consider the case when the aircraft is disabled in such a position that the nose is bent down and the tail of the aircraft is elevated such that it is an obstacle of height of 30 meters from a distance of 1000 meters from the beginning of the approach surface now let us consider this problem by looking at the approach surface looking at the plan view the tail of the aircraft would look something like this in plan view and this is present at a distance of 1000 meters from the beginning of approach surface from the profile view The tail of the aircraft has a height of 30 meters and is present at a distance of 1000 meters from beginning of the approach surface. Let us now zoom in into the obstacle. The distance of the obstacle from the runway strip is 1000 meters. 
that is the obstacle is present at a distance of 1000 meters from the beginning of the approach surface the height of the obstacle is 30 meters as you can see here the permissible height at a distance of 1000 meters from the runway strip will be calculated by using the slope of 2% because a slope of 2% is permitted from the beginning of the approach surface to a distance of 3000 meters so we use this calculation 2 by 100 that is 2% is equal to 1 by 50 and that means that for every 50 meter we go from the beginning of approach surface a height of 1 meter will be permitted. So when we calculate the slope we get 1 by 50 is equal to height permitted upon the distance that is 1000 meters. So we understand that a height of 20 meters is permissible at a distance of 1000 meters from the beginning of approach surface or from this strip which means that from the beginning of approach surface to a distance of 1000 meter if the tail height was just 20 meters this tail would not be an obstacle or would not infringe into the approach surface but now since the height of the tail is 30 meters it is infringing the approach surface by 10 meters so this is what the obstacle is so now we have two choices either to close the runway because the approach surface is being infringed or to displace the threshold and continue operations and we choose the latter. So now let us calculate that at what distance will a height of 30 meter be permitted that is 1 by 50 that is the slope of 2% is equal to the height upon the distance at what distance this height will be permitted. So we get the distance as 1500 meters that is this 30 meter obstacle would be permitted at a further distance of 1500 meters and not 1000 meters. So if we get an extra 500 meters here from the beginning of approach surface, this 30 meter tail height will not be an obstacle anymore. Here let us understand how displacing the threshold solves the problem. So if we pull this surface forward, in that case, this 30 meter object will no longer infringe the approach surface. That is, if we move this entire portion of the approach surface having a slope of 2% forward, then this 30 meter obstacle is no longer infringing the approach surface. So this is what we'll be doing. We'll be displacing the approach surface so that this object no longer forms an obstacle. And we need to calculate this distance as we found that if this obstacle is present at a distance of 1500 meters from the beginning of the approach surface, in that case, this object will no longer form an obstacle or will infringe the approach surface. So basically, initially it was present at a distance of 1000 meters from the beginning of approach surface and now it is to be present 1500 meters from the beginning of the approach surface which means we need to displace the approach surface by 500 meters which again means that the threshold will also be displaced by 500 meters here. Now we have displaced our approach surface and the threshold of the runway by a distance of 500 meters. This was our initial approach surface and the distance between the obstacle and the approach surface was 1000 meters. Now we displace the approach surface by a distance of 500 meters and now the distance of the obstacle from the beginning of the approach surface is 1500 meters so this obstacle is no longer infringing the approach surface so here we can see that since the approach surface is displaced by a distance of 500 meters the threshold is also displaced by a distance of 500 meters and the distance between the approach surface and the new threshold is 60 meters as we could see here. Similarly, when we look at the profile view, we have a similar understanding that this 30 meter object is no longer infringing the approach surface because the new approach surface is displaced by a distance of 500 meters. So it is time that we check our understanding. Let us consider we were working on a runway 2204, which has a total length of 4000 meters. And since we have displaced the threshold by 500 meters of runway 22, the landing distance available for runway 22 decreases. 
and now I would really urge you to calculate this distance and comment down below. The answer to this question will be given in the description but I would really like you to calculate the distances before you check the description. And to help you out with this calculation, do refer to our video on declared distances, the link which of which will be again given in the description. Now that we have displaced our threshold, we must provide enough visual aids to the pilot approaching on the runway that the threshold is displaced. So this is done by the displaced threshold marking. If a run runway is displaced temporarily, this is the marking. And if a threshold of the runway is displaced permanently, this is how the marking looks like. Also, the runway edge marking on the portion of the beginning of the runway, the portion of which is displaced, must show red in the direction of approach as you can see here. And the approach lighting system as you can see here must start from a distance of 60 or 30 meters based on the type of approach lighting system from the threshold. So that's all for the video on calculations involved in displacing a threshold because of an obstacle on the approach surface. To understand the concept better, you can visit our channel and watch the videos on obstacle limitation surfaces, runway markings, runway lighting and calculation of declared distances. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe because your support is our motivation. This is Anvesha Pal signing off. Thank you.